Hi, in this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to create a text or logo reveal like this one. So to get started I've already imported a picture which is gonna be used as the background and right now I'm gonna create a new composition. It's gonna be using the 1080 HDTV preset and the duration is gonna be 5 seconds. So once you've created your main composition you're gonna need to import your background image. So right now I'm going to scale down this image. To scale it down press shift so that it scales down proportionally and then once you have repositioned it and scaled it down you need to select the ellipse tool and then select the image and once you start drawing an ellipse it's going to create a mask on the image. So open the mask options and set the mask feather to somewhere around 600 pixels. So this is gonna be the background, but it still needs a few adjustments. The first one is gonna be applying the tint effect, which with its default settings makes the image black and white. And then also I'm gonna select this image and I'm gonna press T, which is gonna show me the opacity, and I'm gonna set it to 50%. So this right here is going to be the background. The next step is going to be creating a new composition used for the text or for the logo. So I'm going to name it text. And right now I'm going to select the type tool and I'm going to type in storm. After I've typed in my text, I'm going to align it to the center of the composition. And then I'm going to drop in the text composition into the main composition. I'm also going to quickly change its label. The next step is going to be selecting the text composition inside of the project panel and then pressing Ctrl D to duplicate it. And I'm going to rename this second one to Lightning. Now I'm also going to drop it into the main composition and I'm going to change its label. So let's open it and the first thing that you need to do is you need to select your text layer or your image layer of the logo and then right click on it and make it a guide layer. So this way if I disable my text composition the text layer or the logo layer inside of the lightning composition is not going to be visible. So it's only going to be there as a guide so that we can place the lightning on top of it. So we're going to create a new solid. I'm going to name it lightning. And I'm going to trim it down to 8 frames like this. And then I'm going to open the effects and presets panel and I'm going to search for the advanced lightning effect. I'm going to apply it to the solid and right now we're going to have to adjust the effect. The first thing is that we're going to change the lightning type to two-way strike. So it's going to look like this. Then we're going to set the glow opacity down to zero. And we're going to open the expert settings and we're going to change the complexity to five and the core drain to 50%. So right now the property that we're going to animate is the conductivity state. So I'm going to set the playhead to the beginning. I'm going to hit the stopwatch to create a keyframe. If I press U, you can see it. And then I'm going to move the playhead to the end of this layer. And I'm going to set the conductivity state to 5. So if I preview it, this is how it looks. So we're going to be playing with the origin and the direction. Or you can say the start and the end point of the lightning. So for the first one, I might set it up like this. Then I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to duplicate it four times and each time I'm going to change the start and the end point. You can make as many lightning strikes as you like. So for the third one, let's make it like this. And for the fourth one, let's make it like this maybe. Now for the last one, so it's going to be 4 plus 1 in my case, I'm going to move it all the way out to 1 second and 15 frames, which is 1 and a half seconds at the frame rate of 29.97 frames per second. 
and I'm gonna set its start point all the way up here and it's gonna strike somewhere in the middle of my text layer. So if I preview this, you can see that this is the way it looks. So we can go back into the main composition and right now we're gonna search for the glow effect and we're gonna apply it to the lightning composition. So we're gonna apply it once and then we're gonna duplicate it. So now we have it twice in the effects rack and once we duplicate it for the third time, we're gonna set the glow radius to 60. So this is how the lightning strike looks right now. And then we're gonna duplicate this composition by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D. So I'm gonna rename one of them to lightning one and then I'm also gonna duplicate the text layer and I'm gonna rename it to text one. And right now I'm gonna turn off the visibility for the main text layer so that you can see what's happening once I set the track mat of the text one layer to Luma mat. This text layer is only gonna be visible in the parts of the glow of lightning one. So I'm gonna select these two by clicking on the first one and then control clicking on the second one and I'm gonna duplicate them once or maybe even twice to make the text more visible in these areas. So this is what we've done right now. The next step is gonna be to animate the text to come in right here when this last lightning strikes. So we're gonna be searching for an effect which is called linear wipe and we're gonna apply it to the text layer. So I'm gonna set the feather to 75 so that we don't have a rough edge. And as you can see, I'm gonna change the direction so that it's pointing towards this lightning strike. Now, if I move the value past maybe 65, 66%, you can see that we have a huge dead zone. So I'm gonna set the starting value at 66 right here once this lightning starts. So let's set it to 66 and let's create a keyframe and then let's move the playhead all the way until this lightning ends, which is somewhere right here. And let's set the transition completion back to zero. If I press U, you can see the two keyframes that we've just created. And if I preview this, you can see the way it looks. Now, the next step is gonna be animating the background. So we're gonna select all these layers and we're gonna offset them all the way up to the 15th frame. Right now, we're gonna take the clouds image and we're gonna trim it so that it starts at the fifth frame. We're gonna move the playhead all the way to this last small lightning strike. We want to move the playhead until it ends and right now we're gonna select the clouds image or your background image and press Control shift d which is gonna split it. So we're gonna take the first one and we're gonna press T to show the opacity property. We're gonna alt click on the stopwatch and now we can type in an expression. We're gonna be using the wiggle expression and I've already made a separate tutorial about it so you can go on my channel and look for it. So I'm gonna type in wiggle I'm gonna open a bracket and the first number is gonna be the number of wiggles per second. So I'm gonna set that relatively high, which is nine. And then the value, which is gonna be wiggle, I'm gonna set that to 30. So I'm gonna close the bracket and this way, this value might go as low as 20 or might go up as much as 80. So this is how it looks right now. The next step is gonna be selecting this second image, which starts right here. I'm gonna open the opacity property by pressing T. I'm gonna set it to 20%. And I'm gonna set the first keyframe right here. And I'm gonna move the playhead a few frames forwards like that. And I'm gonna set the opacity to 50. So right now, this is how it all looks. 
The next step is going to be creating a new null object and we're going to be parenting these two images to the null. We're going to move the playhead to the beginning and I'm going to open the scale property of the null by pressing S. I'm going to set a scale keyframe with a value of 150. Then I'm going to move the playhead towards the end and I'm going to set it back to 100. So this is how it looks right now. But to make this look even better, I'm going to select these two keyframes and I'm going to hit F9 to easy ease them. Then with both of them selected, I'm going to open the graph editor. Make sure that you're editing the speed graph so that you can see the same thing that I'm looking at. And then let's change the graph so that it looks something like this. So this way, most of the movement is going to be happening right here when the lightning strikes for a few times like that. And then it's going to gradually slow down towards the end. So if I preview it, you're going to see the way it looks. Now, one final step that I left for the end because it's intensive on the rendering is adding motion blur to this main lightning effect. So we're going to search for an effect which is called vector blur and we're going to apply it to the main lightning composition. And just so that you can see what's happening, I'm going to scroll down to this big last lightning strike. And right now we're going to set the vector map to this layer itself. We're going to set the amount to 40, the ridge smoothness to 10 and the map softness to 30. And right now, as you can see, we have a pretty interesting motion blur, which is subtle, but still makes this look a lot better. So if I preview this one final time, you're going to see that we're done and that's going to be it for this tutorial. So that's it for this tutorial. For more tutorials, please check out my channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.